Hey, what's up guys? Fabio here once again. I want to welcome everybody back to another video. And today I'm going to be doing a collection update. And there is quite a bit of stuff here, so I'm just going to go ahead and get right into it. Starting with some comic books. I actually got a couple comics yesterday um, at a one of the local uh, antique malls here. So first up, I didn't even know they did this. But this is actually pretty cool. And it is the adaptation of the Disney Tarzan movie. And this is actually issue one of two. Um, I was not aware that they even did this. Um, and I find it a little weird how Dark Horse did it. But maybe they owned the Tarzan comic license at the time or something. I don't know. Um, but you would figure Disney would have did it you know, kind of on their own or whatever, but still pretty cool. So now I just have to track down issue two of this uh, adaptation. And then I got a couple of Green Hornet comics from now, which they did the Green Hornet back in the 80s, late 80s and into the 90s. So these are from the first volume of stories. This is issue nine, which is pretty cool. Pretty cool cover on there. I like the, uh, Kind of like the different designs, and I do like the way the Green Hornet looks. And then we have issue 10, which I do like that, how it's a little bit darker, a little bit hard to see. But that's actually pretty cool, in my opinion. I actually just watched the uh, the Green Hornet series again. I, I always like to go back and watch it every so often. And uh, also like picking up all the, uh, the comics. Not just from now, but... Uh, Dynamite did them, and, and some of the other ones out there, uh, I always enjoy picking up Green Hornet comics that I don't have. So moving on, um, I did get a couple of records. First up, I got the 12-inch uh, single of uh, Poison's version of Rock and Roll All Night, which was featured in the Less Than Zero soundtrack, which is pretty cool. And this is a radio promo, so it actually has... Uh, the same song on both sides, but still uh, pretty cool to have, in my opinion at least. Next up, I got Kicks, Midnight Dynamite, their third album. Good stuff on here. Next up, an artist that I'm trying to get more into, uh, Robin Trower, Bridge of Sighs, which is one of his bigger albums um, on here. Uh, the title track, Day of the Eagle, Two Rolling Stone. So there is some, uh, again, some of his bigger stuff on here. And then next up, I got, got a couple of uh, local bands from Baltimore. Um, this one is Boot Camp. This is their self-titled EP, which has uh, four songs on it. And uh, my uncle who passed away not too long ago. He was actually in the music video for their song, Fire in the Hole, which is on this uh, this EP, which is pretty cool. And then another local Baltimore band. This is the Ravens with their self-titled album, which includes the song Raised on the Radio, which was featured in Fast Times at Ridgemont High. So there we go. But yeah. And then another uncle of mine, um, he knew David Bell. He knew uh, Rob Fahey, the singer and the guitar player, one of the guitar players uh, from the band. So back in the day. So there you go. And then next up, I got uh, Black Sabbath, their first album, but this is the uh, 2016 Deluxe Edition which includes uh, the second record is all uh, bonus tracks. So uh, Evil Woman is on there, which was not on the original American pressing. Uh, so that was kind of the main reason that I got it, because I love that song. Then there's a couple uh, jams and, and alternate versions and outtakes. But you get the album remastered, and then you get the second record is all you know, bonus stuff on here, which is pretty cool. And then it does open up. It's a gatefold. So that's what the front would look like. And then this is what the inside would look like. So pretty cool. But very cool stuff. Um, they also released 
deluxe versions of Paranoid and uh, Master of Reality. So I'd like to get those because they have, again, bonus tracks and stuff. But yeah, pretty cool. So I'm very happy that I got this one. And then the last one that I got is a uh, official bootleg. This is Santana Going Home Live 1973, which comes in this really nice box. And this was recorded at uh, Dillon Stadium, Hartford, Connecticut, August 17th of that year. And it is a three-record set, which is very nice. Um, and at this time, uh, who was in sent? At this time, um, of course, Carlos Santana, uh, Michael Shreve on the drums, and uh, the, what, what album? I'm trying to see what album they were promoting. Uh. Caravan Sarai. Yeah, Caravan Sarai was the album that this tour was. So, yeah, but it, it, what's really cool is it's actually colored vinyl. So the box opens up, and it is actually the colors of the Mexican flag. So the first record is green, which is eh, kind of looking a little bit dark. There we go. I know it's kind of hard to see. And then... The second record is, of course, white. And the third record is, of course, red. But very cool. I did see this and uh, grabbed it because this is a really cool set. Um, always trying to get more Santana on vinyl. And again, this is a, a official bootleg. This is one of the, uh, in more recent years, probably about maybe the last 10 years or so, uh, there's been a lot of these small companies that have been releasing, uh, not just on vinyl, but on CD as well. They have been releasing these old uh, radio broadcast concerts, uh, remastered and cleaned up. And uh, yeah, so I definitely don't mind having them. So, And these actually are, they're kind of iffy because like I know some of the Aerosmith ones I have and sometimes the actual bootleg will sound better than the uh, official one. So that's why I keep not only keep my bootlegs just to have them, because I like collecting bootlegs, but sometimes uh, the bootleg recording will actually sound better than the radio broadcast. So there you go. But yeah. So anyway, uh, moving on. I did get one video game for PlayStation 2. And uh, my brother and I have been talking about this uh, game a lot lately. So I was actually at um, the trading post. There's a there is a trading post here, and um, it's mostly a gun shop. So I go in there and look at guns and stuff. But they also have video games and movies and and like jewelry and and other stuff. But it's mostly a gun shop, which is pretty cool. But I always walk out with a bunch of stuff. Usually when I go in there. I find some pretty cool stuff. And they had this on GameCube, and I was like, oh, man. So I looked in the PlayStation section, and luckily they had it. And it is none other than Dragon Ball Z Budokai. Uh, my cousin actually had this game growing up, and we would all play it. And I never got it until now. So I found it. It was a couple dollars, um, and I grabbed it. And it, it does have the instruction booklet, which is cool, because I do like to get the games complete. And, uh, yeah, this is just a really fun game from back in the day, um, 2002. Wow, this game came out in 2002? Holy shit, I thought this game came out later than that. Wow, really? 2002? Oh, it says 2002 on the copyright. Hold on a minute. There's no way this game came out in 2002. If it did, I'm fucking old, but... <laughs> no, it did, because on the back here, there's an ad for Super Android 13, the movie, and it says 2003. So, okay, wow, this game is that old. Holy shit! I thought this game came out in, like, 2004, 2005. Wow, 2002? Holy fuck, dude. Like, I know I'm cursing and getting excited, but I didn't realize this game was that old. Wow. 
I have to where I have to get my phone. I have to look this up. Like this is bothering me. Holy fuck! There's no way this game this game came out when I was ten years old. Oh, come on, I hate when this thing. Acts up. Just behave, please. And it's it's only when I get on Wikipedia. I don't know why it's... I mean, I could have just Googled the... Uh, November 2nd, 2002. Wow, holy shit. Wow. North America. No, North America, December 3rd. Okay. December 3rd, 2002 is when... Okay. But still, 2002. Wow. Holy fuck. 17 years old. Wow. That is fucking crazy. That is crazy how long ago this game came out. I am... Uh, there is a HD collection um, that came out in 2012 for PlayStation 3. So I'll have to grab that. At some point, but um, wow, <laughs> holy sorry about that, folks. But I just got like really excited about that. Um, but yeah, 2002, wow, but a great game nonetheless. So, yeah, moving on from that, gotta move these things out of the way. I did get uh, a couple VHS. Uh, this one was interesting, I found this at Goodwill the other day. And it is actually a bootleg copy of Batman and Robin. Uh, yeah, definitely you could tell by the artwork, um, you know, that it is a bootleg. But I saw this and I was like, well, that's actually pretty cool in my opinion. Um, so I grabbed it, you know, I thought it was pretty cool. And then that's what the actual tape. But it's funny because it says rated R. Uh, this movie is not rated R. <laughs> um, and it is a uh, recordable uh, VHS right there, but yeah, I saw this, and again, I thought this was actually pretty cool, so that's why I grabbed it, but yeah, um, a bootleg copy of Batman and Robin, and this is actually pretty cool, uh, this is Backstreet Boys All Access Video, but it comes in like this really nice box, and it has a uh, CD in here, so uh, this is actually uh, behind the scenes footage of some of their music videos and then it has the actual music videos on here and then there's some live footage um and then just you know the band kind of hanging out and doing their own thing so this is what the actual tape looks like there's a thing in here um this is on dvd but i thought it was pretty cool uh so in here you get a little reproduction lanyard so that's actually pretty cool and then um, there's the tape. So, yeah, I thought this was a little cool box set. You know, I do enjoy Backstreet Boys. I grew up, when I was growing up, that was, they were kind of one of the bigger uh, boy bands. So, yeah, so that's pretty cool. And then the uh, the promo CD that came with it, if it wants to come out. How the fuck you get this thing out? Would they never take this CD out? Is that is that what's going on here? All right, there we go. Oh, it's okay. They got some residue on here. So, on here, um, you have uh, Factory Boys doing "Darling" live, and then there's a couple songs. Um, uh, Ijimin, I don't know who that is. Solid Harmony, I don't know who they are. Uh, Britney Spears and Don Phillip. And those are all just samplers. So it just plays a little bit of their music. Um, but there is one actual like Backstreet Boys song on here. But yeah, no wonder it, it took forever to get out because it's got sticker residue, of course. But again, still, you know, for like a dollar, that was actually pretty cool. 
So I will definitely uh, check this out because it does have the video for uh, everybody, Backstreet's Back, which that was really cool as a kid because it was like in a haunted mansion and they all were like dressed up as different horror movie characters. So that was actually, as a kid, a really cool video to see. Um, there's also As Long As You Love Me, a sneak preview of All I Have to Give, Quit Playing Games With My Heart, and then there's a couple uh, live stuff, and then uh, We Got It Going On. So, still pretty cool. And then, next up, I got NASCAR Racers, Start Your Engines, which this was actually a Fox Kids show that I really liked back in the day. Um, there is another VHS out there, which has a couple more episodes, but I believe this is like the pilot. So it's like the first couple episodes that they showed. Um, and then I'm sure the other tape had, you know, some more random episodes. But this has never been released on DVD, at least in America, which is unfortunate because I actually really like this when it was on. Um, I think like McDonald's or something had the toys because I remember having like a couple of these cars back in the day. So, yeah, uh, it was pretty cool. But yeah, NASCAR racers. I, the theme song I do remember was pretty cool. And next up, and last in terms of VHS, I did get one wrestling VHS, and I know I'm looking happy. Um, this was one of the last pay-per-views that I needed. This one, uh, when you see it, is a little bit more... It's not harder to find. It just goes for ridiculous prices. But I did get this for um, a decent price, at least in my opinion. And this was a little bit of a special Christmas gift to myself. And it is WCW Bash at the Beach 2000. So any wrestling fan knows the significance of this event. Um, this is the Canadian release because it was actually only released in Canada on VHS. Um, but yeah, this is the one where Hulk Hogan came out and, you know, that whole thing where he laid down in the middle, or Jeff Jarrett laid down in the middle of the ring and then he cut the promo and then it went to court because he actually got fired and, and it was like, no, that wasn't real. Like, that was part of the story and this. And it was a whole mess. And, and yeah. Um, but, yeah, this is the, the actual VHS tape of it. And it's cool because they actually put it in a squeeze and shake case so it can stay nice and everything. Um, but, yeah, I've been wanting to get this tape for a very long time. Finally got it for a, a fairly decent price and uh, very happy about that. So, yeah, and the only other... Um, WCW like pay-per-view I don't have on VHS is the Crockett Cup 86 which is really really hard to find um I've seen it on eBay a couple times uh usually it'll just be the tape it won't come with the box but I'm trying to get it with the box and then the only WWF pay-per-view I don't have on VHS is uh the American release of In Your House 2 the Lumberjacks. Um, that one's pretty hard to come by for some reason. I do have the Canadian release. Um, the only difference is what it actually says on the box. Um, the Canadian release says WWF Terminators um, 1995 or whatever. And then the American release says In Your House on it. That's really the only difference. Um, I think everything else is the same. But one of these days I will uh, track that down and get it. But very, very happy to finally get one of the uh the the ones that everybody wants so to speak but yep finally got it for a decent price because it used to go for some crazy prices online um with shipping and stuff i paid like 250 you know because it came from canada so of course the shipping was a little bit more but i think the bid i won the bid at like 235 or something and then with the shipping and stuff and taxes, it ended up being like $250. Uh, but that is actually a really good price for that one because it usually will go for a lot more. It will go for 300 up. So I actually got a good deal on that. So very happy. And it's not like, you know, I'm not working and I can't afford it. Like I can't afford it. Like my bills are paid and all that. And, you know, finally got one of the ones, one of the harder ones to get. So now I just have to get the uh, the In Your House 2, the American release. Um, no, it says the Lumberjacks on the box. My bad, not In Your House. So anyway, moving on. Um, and the rest are, of course, DVD and Blu-ray. Um, I did get one 
uh, music DVD because the the one record store that I go to uh, he has DVDs and Blu-rays and uh, just music stuff, not movies. Um, but this is pretty cool. This is Damn Yankees Uprising Live. Of course, Damn Yankees featured uh, Ted Nugent, you know, who was pretty still pretty big at the time. Also, uh, Jack Blades from Night Ranger, right? Jack Blades was in Night Ranger, correct? And then yeah, and then Tommy Shaw from Styx, and then the drummer was uh, Michael Cartleone, who at the time wasn't really big, but he ended up playing with Leonard Skinner and all these other bands. Um, and I didn't even know this was on DVD, to be honest. I, I did know it was on VHS, but um, this is from the Rocky Mountain Jam. I'm not sure the year. Uh, 1992, it says on here, so that's probably the year that it happened. And then it has some um, backstage footage and rehearsals and interviews and all kinds of stuff. But Damn Yankees was pretty cool. Um, I did like the uh, the music that they put out. Um, and then, of course, like they'll play... They played Cat Scratch Fever, which was Ted Nugent, Renegade, which was Styx. Um, so there was some good stuff on here. But yeah, pretty cool. For $7, brand new, still factory sealed, not bad. Next up, I know I talked about this in my live stream, but I actually finally got Home Alone 3 on DVD. Uh, yeah, for some reason, um, I, this movie just always evaded me. I could never find it on DVD. Um, I mean, I, you know, I could have just grabbed it off of eBay or whatever, but no, I like to go out and, and look for DVDs and Blu-rays. Uh, this is not on Blu-ray, which I'm kind of disappointed about, but not a bad movie, actually. Not a bad film, in my opinion. Um, never never had an issue with this. I've actually always liked this movie quite a bit. And you know what? I'm actually going to take this to work with me and watch it tonight, so there we go. Uh, yeah, but Home Alone 3, uh, fun, fun movie, in my opinion. So this is going to go over here in my bag so I can watch it tonight at work and have some fun. So yeah. Uh, next up, um, actually, let's do, yeah, let's kind of make this a little more uh, organized here. Uh, the other movie that I got on Blu-ray is All the Right Moves with Tom Cruise. Now the reason why I got this on DVD, did I say Blu-ray before? I think I did. I don't know. Um, the reason why I got this on DVD, now it is on Blu-ray, but the DVD is actually unedited. For some reason, the Blu-ray, um, they cut out Leah Thompson's nudity on the Blu-ray, which is weird because they didn't cut out Tom Cruise's nudity because you see the little Cruise in this movie. Um, but on the Blu-ray, for some reason, they cut out Leah Thompson's nudity in the in the nude scene. Uh, why, I don't know. I guess maybe she made a request or something um, to get it removed. But, yeah. So this DVD is actually uncut. It has all the nudity and stuff like that in there. But I just find it weird how they only cut her nudity and not Tom Cruise. Um, but... Oh, well. But the story behind that's actually kind of funny because um, when Leah Thompson auditioned for the movie, she was worried that they were going to ask her to remove her clothing for the audition, and they did not. So when they filmed it, um, there was actually another scene in the movie where she was supposed to be nude, but she said, I'm only going to do the one. And they ended up just doing the one. And Tom Cruise was like, well, you know what? If she's going to be naked, I'm going to be naked. So Tom Cruise ended up, you know, doing a nude scene for the movie as well. And Leah Thompson was very thankful of that. Like, she's like, you know, he didn't have to do that, but he did. And it made me feel more comfortable and safe. And, you know, so that's very cool of Tom Cruise. But, yeah, I just find it weird how they cut out the female nudity and not also the male nudity. But. Oh, well. And another movie where they did that is Varsity Blues. The uh, the Blu-ray, and I even think the deluxe DVD of Varsity Blues, they ended up cutting nudity out of that. But if you get the old DVD, it has it in there. I don't know why. Like I don't I don't know what the reason for that is. But yeah, I saw this. It was a dollar. Um, so I was like, yeah, I'll grab that. You know, it's, it's, this is a good movie. Like I'm not getting it just for the the fact that it's uncut. No, this is actually a good movie. So I actually enjoy this. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, then I, 
got a couple TV shows here. First up, this is a Region 2 release because they actually released this TV show the right way in Region 2 land. And this is Seasons 3 and 4 of Goosebumps. Yes, in uh, Region 2 land and even in Australia, even in Region 4 land, they released Goosebumps in the proper way. Now, here in America, they released um, the majority of the episodes. There are still like five or six episodes which have not gotten a DVD release. Um, but they released them in like random volumes and stuff like that. But uh, again, I got the this one because I do really like the artwork on here. And uh, it was released properly. So it is a, um, a five disc set. And season three is 22 episodes. And season four, which was the last season, was only eight episodes. So how it's split up is season three is on the first three discs or four discs excuse me and then season one is on its own disc which eight episodes uh for a, a show like this where the episodes are only 20 like 20 minutes that's okay um eight episodes is is what i would do um anything more than that you're gonna have video compression and it's not gonna look as good as it could but eight episodes is okay so that's like two and a half hours of video so that's that's not a problem yeah so yeah, uh, so I did get seasons three, and, and I got this, uh, this was shipped from America, so it wasn't a big deal, and I paid, like, with shipping and tax and all that, it was, like, less than 20 bucks, because these are out of print, and some of the prices online, they go for a little more than that, but yeah, this was pretty cool to get the last two seasons, now I just need to get seasons one and two, and I'll be pretty happy with that, but yep. Goosebumps. And I know that a bunch of the episodes on here um, are actually not on DVD. Like, I don't think um, The House of No Return and Don't Go to Sleep, I don't think those are on DVD in America. Um, but I think maybe the rest of them are, or most of them. So I don't know, to be honest. I really don't. But I, I look at the titles, and I, you know, some of the titles are more well known than the others. But, yeah, so anyway, that is three and four of Goosebumps. Just need to get the rest. And then I definitely need to get Are You Afraid of the Dark. I need to start buying those soon. Um, but anyway, the next up, um, they actually had, this is not the complete series of the show. Uh, but this is pretty much, this is the only DVDs that came out. And it's only most of the first season. But I did get uh, volumes one and two of dark wing duck which is very cool um and as you can see i did pay 25 bucks to get both of these but volume two is actually still factory sealed and i did look on ebay and stuff and to get both of these in the goodest condition as they are it was going to be about 25 bucks so i said you know what i'll just get them you know and save money and stuff so yeah so this is uh volume one which has the first 27 episodes now, the only issue with this is for some reason the pilot is edited. I don't know why they did that, but they, they edited the pilot episode. Uh, the VHS is actually the uncut release, so I'll have to find that at some point. Um, but yeah, this is a three-disc set, and it includes the first uh, 27 episodes. So on here, which is cool because each one has different artwork. So this is disc one. Really cool there and then the I think the discs all look the same then we have disc two okay no the discs are all different actually the discs reflect the front artwork so that's pretty cool and then last for this set we have disc three So there we have it for that. Um, yeah, and then uh, actually Darkwing Duck, of course, is on Disney+. Plus, But they actually went in and edited a couple of the episodes for whatever reason. So if you want them besides the pilot uncut, this is the way to go. Now, again, this is uh, the first 54 episodes because season one was 65 episodes. And then season two and three, I believe, were like 13 apiece or something like that. 
Um, and then this is volume two, which is actually still brand new factory sealed. I'm not going to pop it open for this video, but there you go. So, yeah, so most of season one actually got a DVD release. And then, of course, Disney stopped putting them out on DVD. Um, it's weird because some shows like Tailspin and even DuckTales, they finished. Um, but most of the shows, Chip and Dale is not complete. That's not complete. Uh, Gargoyles is not complete, so that's just the way it goes with Disney. But, of course, I'm going to hold on to those because I like collecting DVDs and Blu-rays. Next up, this is actually pretty cool. This is Doom. A, this is a bonus DVD uh, that came at Walmart when you bought the movie. Um, and this has a couple of featurettes which are not available on the DVD or the Blu-ray. So on here you do have a analysis breakdown of two of the scenes um and then you have uh beneath the exoskeleton which is looking at the different uh stuff with that and then there's a little featurette it's called rock's italian restaurant where uh, it says join the rock and his friends as he invites us for dinner at his favorite restaurant in prague the Rock serves up some great stories and jokes and even puts on the cook's hat to prepare the house specialty dessert. So that was really the selling point was that featurette, but the other stuff should be pretty cool uh, to look at with this movie. So yeah, I, this was again a dollar. All the DVDs at the Trading Post, except like the box sets, are a dollar. So uh, when I see stuff that I don't have, I definitely grab them. And then the Blu-rays are a little bit more, which we'll get into in a minute here. but. Especially when it's something like this, where it's not available anywhere else, definitely going to pick this up. But of course, someone had to write on the fucking DVD, and they actually wrote on the paper insert, not the outside, but whatever. Uh, but yeah, still pretty cool. And then I grabbed a couple Pride FC DVDs, which uh, Pride Fighting Championship was basically the Japanese promotion um, that was the rival to the UFC back in the day. Coincidentally, the UFC bought them out, um, but back in the day, they were kind of the alternative to the UFC, and that's why a lot of the fighters went there, because they made more money. So this one, I think this is like 16 or 17. The events are not numbered on here, which is weird, but oh well. Um, but this is Pride Beasts from the East. So there we go. And on here, uh, we have Mark Coleman, which I really liked him. Don Fry, I liked him. Gary Goodridge, uh, I liked him as well. Guy Mesner, I liked him. Um, Antonio Rodrigo uh, Norguera, he's pretty good. I like him as well. So there's that one. And then I got uh, Championship Chaos. So on here, you have Vanderlei Silva, uh, Antonio. Uh, Rodrigo Norguera again, Heath Herring, uh, Quentin Rampage Jackson, Henzo Gracie, uh, Dan Henderson. So some pretty big names in MMA are on here. And then the last one that I got is Cold Fury 2. So, yeah. And then again, we have uh, Vanderlei Silva, Rampage Jackson, uh, Valentin Overeem, um, Jeremy Horn, who fought in UFC. So, again, some uh, recognizable names. But, again, for a dollar, can't go wrong. Good stuff. At least in my opinion. <laughs> and that's it for the DVDs, and the rest are all Blu-rays. Now, the first two that I got, uh, MVD was running a Black Friday sale, so I got these really, really cheap. Um, they were like 10 bucks a piece and then shipping, so... Uh, first up, this is from the Re the Rewind Collection, which they do all the old action movies and stuff. And this was their latest release, which is My Samurai. Um, I actually have never seen this, but um, based upon the cast, I mean, Mako is in it, Bubba Smith, Terry O'Quinn, um, you know, and it was recommended, like, they, you know, to get. So I decided to, uh, to pick this up. Now, the slipcover is really cool because the slipcover is like the old VHS, how they would cut the box and put it into the plastic clamshell. That is really cool, which is another selling point. But also on here, um, they do have a remastered version of the movie, which I believe is the unrated version. 
And then as a bonus, they actually put the actual VHS version on here as well with the previews and everything, which is cool. Um, and then there is an interview with Julian Lee, who plays the, uh, the hero, who plays the samurai, so to speak. Um, there's a couple other interviews on here. And then, you know, the generic stuff like the trailer and all that. But pretty cool. Um, you know, I decided to grab this one kind of on a whim, but it was like, why not? And then the other one, uh, this was put out by MVD's regular label. Uh, they actually re-released Find Me Guilty on Blu-ray. Now, this was released on Blu-ray a number of years ago, but it went out of print very quickly. So I grabbed it from them um, because I do like the artwork better because that was the poster. And, of course, the quality is probably going to be a little bit better. But um, this is actually one of my favorite Vin Diesel movies, and I think it's one of his best performances. So I was very happy that they uh, put this out. And again, it was on sale for Black Friday. Uh, it has all the features from the DVD. So, hell yeah. Can't complain. Um, next up, I got a couple of James Bond movies. And I know what people are wondering. Like, didn't you just get the James Bond set that had all the ones that you didn't have? And then you already had Skyfall. And Well, yeah. But, um, of course, the one that was not included in the set, because it's the unofficial Bond film, is Never Say Never Again. Now, this, of course, is the UK release, but it's actually region free. Uh, for those that were wondering, I did get this off of eBay. And um, it has all the stuff from the DVD and, and all that, so no big deal. But I was a little bummed out when I opened it up because the seller didn't say that it was the region 2 or region B for Blu-ray. Uh, release, but I'm okay with that. I'm okay because again, it is region free, as you can see right there, and it has all the features and stuff, so it's not a big deal. Like I kind of freaked out a little bit, but um, as I looked at it and stuff, I was like, "Well, it is region free, so who cares, right?" And of course, it is the unofficial Bond film, so I'm not really complaining. And I like how it's region B because it's the really thick Blu-ray case that I wish they would do in America. Um, for regular movies so yeah so now I actually have every James Bond film on Blu-ray again this is the only one that was not included in the, the sets because this was the uh, unofficial James Bond film but now I have it, so. and then I also got the older uh, collector's edition release of Casino Royale because the features all the features on here did not transfer over to the newer Blu-ray releases um Again, I have the uh, the Bond 50 set, which has everything up to Quantum of Solace. Um, and then, yeah, it has a spot for Skyfall in there, but I have Skyfall on its own. Um, but again, this all the features on here did not transfer over to that. But that's okay, because I actually really like uh, Casino Royale. So I cannot complain, which actually has one of my favorite Bond girls in Ava Green, who was absolutely one of the most beautiful women ever. So there we go. So collector's edition of Casino Royale with all the features. So then the rest of these, um, except the two TV shows, um, these are all ones that I got at the trading post the other day. Now their Blu-ray deals are good. It's six for 20. Um, so I ended up getting 12. I found 12 Blu-rays to grab. So first up, I got, uh, Spy Game. Now this is a movie that I've actually never seen that I've always wanted to see. Um, so that is why I picked it up. Again, I remember when this came out, it looked pretty cool. It looked pretty interesting. Um, the combination of Redford and Brad Pitt, I thought was cool. Um, and then also being directed by Tony Scott, I think was pretty cool as well. So again, I've actually never seen this, always wanted to, and they had it on Blu-ray. So I was like, hell yeah, I'll grab it. Next up, this is actually a Jim Carrey movie that I know never gets talked about, but I actually enjoyed this one. And it is Yes Man. Um, I remember watching this on HBO a couple times when it came out. And liking it, and I just, you know, this one, I think it's put on the back burner. I ne again, I never hear people talk about this one anymore. Um, but I was like, yeah, I'll definitely, you know, for for six for twenty, you know, I'll, I'll put this in the pile. So I was like, yeah. Next up, uh, this is a movie that I enjoy quite a bit. 
upgrading from the DVD, and it is Runaway Jury. Um, again, I actually really enjoy this movie. It's been a long time since I've seen it, but I did like it. I really liked the cast in it, and it was a pretty solid movie, in my opinion. So I'm definitely looking forward to uh, watching this again. And next up, another upgrade from uh, DVD is American Psycho. A uh, great movie. Um, there is a 4K release, but the only difference from the 4K release is there's a brand new commentary with the director. Now, this does have a commentary with the director, but it's an older one. Um, but I'm not really, you know, worried about that. But yeah, so we have American Psycho. And then uh, some of the features did not transfer over from the DVD. Uh but the DVD I have is in storage, so I'll just transfer them over when I get them out of there. So, yeah. And then next up, I actually had this on Blu-ray, but like an idiot, I got rid of it for whatever reason. But it is From Paris with Love. Yeah, I um, I remember watching it when I had that Blu-ray, and for some reason I didn't like the movie, so I got rid of it. But over time, like I, I kind of got what everybody else was feeling. And it's like, oh, it's a really good movie. So, yeah, I found it. I was like, oh, I'm definitely going to grab that. So, finally got this back in the collection. Next up is another upgrade from DVD. It is Enough Said. Uh, one of James Gandolfini's last movies. Also has uh, Julia Louis uh, Dreyfus from uh, Seinfeld, Seinfeld, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but, yeah, this is a really good movie. Good performances. So, yeah. Next up, a couple of Bruce Willis movies. Bruce Willis double feature upgrading from DVD. And it is Mercury Rising and The Jackal. I really like Mercury Rising. I think it's one of Bruce Willis's more underrated movies. And The Jackal is not too bad. Um, but I actually prefer, out of, out of these, I prefer Mercury Rising. Um, which is a, a really good, un, underrated Bruce Willis movie. And again, I do like The Jackal, but... I prefer Mercury Rising out of these two. And it's, oh, Jesus, Mary, and St. Peter. Um, I do like how each movie is on its own disc as well. Because sometimes they won't do that. But with this one, they do. Next up, another upgrade from DVD. It is Land of the Lost, which is a funny movie. Um, I actually enjoy this one quite a bit. So, yeah, I saw this. I was like, oh, cool. I could definitely, definitely want to get that on Blu-ray. So, yeah. Next, got a couple Disney movies. First up, we have Monsters University. Uh, it does have the slipcover, which is nice. Um, I I did like this. I prefer the first one, but this was a cool movie. I liked how they went back and they brought everybody back pretty much from the first one, um, except maybe a couple people here and there. But I liked how they, they went back and showed them in, in school and stuff. But... Um, yeah, this was a, it was a good one, but I like the first one more. So, and next up we have an underrated Pixar movie, in my opinion, with A Bug's Life. Yeah, I saw this. I, I was like, oh, cool, A Bug's Life. I actually, I've always liked this movie. I've always enjoyed A Bug's Life, and uh, yeah, I saw it on Blu-ray. I was like, yeah, definitely gonna grab that. Good movie. And again, it's underrated because I never hear people talk about A Bug's Life. Um, even back when it came out, I think it was one of those movies, it just kind of came and went and people forgot about it, I guess, you know? So next off, a couple more movies here. Uh, we have Gladiator. Great movie. I've always, yeah, um, I've always enjoyed Gladiator ever since it came out, uh, back in the day. Um, and this has both versions of the movie. It has the the uh, theatrical and the extended cut, and then it has all the features from both versions of the DVD. So, not bad, in my opinion, but great movie. And the last movie that I got is Copland. Now, I actually already have Copland. Um, I do have it in a three-pack with First Blood and Lockup, but the Rambo, uh, the original Rambo, the trilogy, uh, the 4K Blu-rays actually have more features on the Blu-ray copy, not the 4K copy. So I definitely want to uh, get those for the for the more features. Um, so that's why I went ahead and grabbed Copland. They did have lockup there, but it was in a double feature with Universal Soldier. And I already have Universal Soldier. I was like, I'll just 
get lock up cheaper somewhere else by itself. So, yeah, so I grabbed Copland. Yeah, because, like I said, I was just looking online. The uh, the 4K uh, releases have more features for the Rambo movie. So I was like, cool. Same with Terminator 2. Terminator 2, the uh, the 4K release on the actual, on the, the Blu-ray, not the 4K disc, has a new documentary about the movie. So I was like, all right, I'll grab that. So last but certainly not least, uh, Amazon was running a sale on Star Trek Blu-rays. So I grabbed these. Now what pissed me off is I ordered them on December 1st. And I didn't get them until December 10th. Like that was really weird. Um, and it shipped out like December 9th. So Amazon. But I did get the complete original series of Star Trek on Blu-ray. And I also got the animated series on Blu-ray. So, yeah, I finally decided to, uh, a little while ago, I was just looking online to see, like, if they had all the features from the DVDs, and they do. And then, of course, this one has new features. Um, so I was like, you know what? I'll get them on Blu-ray. Why not? Um, you know, why not get, you know, upgrade for the better picture and sound quality and, um, you know, get them on Blu-ray. So, yeah, we have the original series. Now, this has, you can watch the episodes with the original special effects or the enhanced special effects, which is cool. Um, and then, you know, a little cheap on the packaging, in my opinion, but you open it up and it tells you, you know, which episode, what season, what features. So, uh, season one is on seven discs and each disc has their own features. Season two is also on seven discs and then season three is on five discs and then the sixth disc of the season um, actually has uh, the two versions of the cage and then it has because when this blu-ray came out they found another version of where no man has gone before uh, which was the the pilot episode uh, after the, they did the cage. So there's actually like three versions on there, which is pretty cool. And then there's some other features, but yeah. And then of course the, all the discs really, that's all they are. It just says Star Trek Blu-ray tells you what episodes are on there and special features. So that's it. But yeah, um, I do have both of these on DVD, but I figured I looked all the features transferred over from the DVDs and I figured, you know what? They're Blu-ray. It's better quality, you know, time to, time to start upgrading, you know, on certain things. But, yep, there's Star Trek. And then, of course, we have the Star Trek animated series, which I actually really like. I do really enjoy the animated series of Star Trek. And, again, all the features transfer over. And then you also, what's really cool is they come with each episode. You get a uh an art card for each episode which is pretty cool. And i'm not going to sit here and go through all of them but i'll show a couple of them this one's for mud's passion and then we have how sharper than a serpent's tooth but yeah i um i really like the star trek animated series i remember watching it like on nickelodeon or something back in the day um i do remember watching it on tv and then, of course, getting them on DVD and VHS. I actually have the complete series of the original Star Trek, Star Trek Next Generation, and the animated series all on VHS as well. So I'm definitely going to keep those. But, yeah, so on here, since it is two seasons, um, season one is two and a half discs. And then uh, since season two was only one, two, three, four, five, six episodes, they just put all season two and the last episode of season one all on one disc, but it's Blu-ray, so it can handle the capacity. But very, very cool. Again, Amazon was running a sale um, on Star Trek Blu-rays, so I grabbed them. The only one that they didn't have on sale that I wanted was The Next Generation, um, but I can wait to get that because I actually don't have The Next Generation on DVD. I only have that on VHS. Um, but yeah, so now I have uh, two out of the three series that are on Blu-ray because, well, no, four because Enterprise is on Blu-ray, but I'll get that later. I'm not in a rush to get Enterprise. Um, but hopefully I heard rumors that Deep Space Nine possibly, maybe 
we'll be getting a remaster and a Blu-ray release because the documentary was so successful. Um, so fingers crossed because I actually really like Deep Space Nine. And then hopefully that means Voyager will get it and then we'll have all the Star Trek stuff on Blu-ray. But one can only hope. So anyway, I know this was long-winded, but I hope that you guys enjoyed this collection update. And I will be talking to you guys later on this week with some more videos. So until then, take care. I'll talk to you guys later. See you.